it's uh, so the question is, in some ways, it's related to your question. I think some of those ideas came up in that that thing that you know Spielberg and Lucas did at USC, kind of talking about the future of cinema. I think they were actually saying that all those little movies might just go away, and that the big ones were going to start costing you like opera prices, you know. But that was you know part of that same. But they were also kind of taking, they were kind of apologizing for something they started, you know, between Jaws and Star Wars, right? And now they're trying to make Lincoln and whatever kind of indie farty arty films like you know George Lucas wants to do now. You know, and it's like the uh, they've kind of been instrumental in clearing out that opportunity. You know, the so your question is kind of like, well, where does that leave us? You know, it's like the uh, uh, go ahead, Don. I was going to say that I think in a lot of ways, if you look at even what they did, I mean, we're all just kind of channeling our childhoods in a weird way. Like, like Lucas did. Uh, you know, they did Raiders of the Lost Ark, which was you know he watched the serials when he was a kid of those adventure, the black and white adventure serials where they'd show the map and. And you know, American Graffiti obviously wasn't a Sarah Temple, but he was cha channeling his his childhood. And I think perhaps one of the reasons that these '80s franchises are popular is the executives are the age now where they're like, "Man, I remember Transformers. Oh, man, I remember Knight Rider. I remember whatever." And I think that it cycles in some ways, and I think it does cr hopefully create uh, an avenue for originality, like with Gravity, where it's like I think that the big tent poles started. If you remember, like. Three, four months ago, Variety was reporting about how these tent poles aren't working and they're losing all this money, and then boom, gravity hits. And I think it's sort of, you know, people were kind of looking for that savior, and here's maybe a new way to create the new memories for the new kids so they'll be making Gravity 6 and whatever when they, when they get older. Michael, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I just maybe just provide some context. You know, Hollywood has always hung from a thread, you know. It, it, it is going back, certainly back to the 60s when the studio system started to break up and they didn't, it's very similar to today. They made, a, you know, they were in the late 60s and early 70s, they were trying to figure out how to compete with television or, or they didn't really know what to make, um, which is why um, they, you know, you had sense around and you had all these kind of gimmicks that the studios were trying to, trying to, to crank out to get people back in the theater, the big screen experience, which, you know, is very much akin to today. Um, and I, I think that creative people are always going to figure out a way to do it. And, and the technology is changing in such a way um, that it may not be like the old way, but it's going to be you know, a new way that allows ordinary people, um, like Marcus said, I mean, everyone has a camera in their pocket now, and people are willing to sit down and watch, uh, you know, watch that. They don't re require the big screen Michael Bay experience all the time. Sometimes they're in the mood for that, and sometimes they're not. And uh, so I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think there's always an opportunity, and I think smart, resourceful people will figure out a way to take advantage of it. Garrett, did you want to say anything? No, you're just holding the mic. <laughs> the, go ahead. Um, I definitely think there's movies that are made for the big screen. Um, uh, working on Star Trek uh, Into into Darkness, um, I was there from start to, f to finish a production. Um, and my job was to put the fights together and train the actors. And um, it was a movie that when I watched JJ shoot it, I'm like, what is he, what is he trying to achieve here? And then to go see it on IMAX in 3D and see it come to life was pretty amazing. You know, we're, we're doing things with lights just flying around and you're like, how is this gonna tie in with this movie? But by God, he made it work, you know, and it was, it was pretty impressive to, to see it on IMAX. So I think there is uh, definitely um, a large format that we need to as audience experience. Um, and there's also the smaller format where we can look at it on our iPhones or iPads and be content with it. So knowing the content and how, how you can relate to it, I think, is a big thing as well. And I think the audience wants it now as well. You know, and the faster you can get something out, you know, the more people are going to be in tune to, to viewing it. 